Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Jason Landry? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at a brief background of this case, move to the timeline of the disappearance, then offer my analysis. Jason Landry was born on July 29, 1999. He grew up in Texas. He was the youngest of three siblings. His father was a preacher, and his mother was a musician. In 2020, Jason started his first semester at Texas State University in San Marcos, which is about an hour northwest of San Antonio. Now moving to the timeline of the disappearance. On Sunday, December 13, 2020, 21-year-old Jason Landry was driving from his college campus to his parents' home in Missouri City, Texas, which is just southwest of Houston. The most logical route to take would be Highway 80 South to Highway 183 and then to Interstate 10 East toward Houston. The trip should have only taken about three hours. Jason was operating a 2003 Nissan Altima, which was registered to his parents. Jason's cell phone was later used to reconstruct his route. He used an app called Waze to give him directions. Jason departed his apartment at about 10.55 p.m. His estimated time of arrival would have been at about 2 a.m. on December 14. At 11.05 p.m., Jason drove his vehicle on Highway 80 and passed under I-35 in San Marcos. Two minutes later, he entered Caldwell County. He passed through several small towns over the next few minutes as he continued on Highway 80. Nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary. At 11.24 p.m., he entered the city of Luling. He passed through the intersection with Hackberry Street. Highway 80 becomes East Austin Street at this point. Jason then minimized the Waze app on his phone and opened Snapchat. He continued on East Austin Street through the intersection of Magnolia Avenue. Jason should have turned right on Magnolia Avenue or turned right at either of the next two streets. Any of those right turns would have taken him where he needed to go. Jason did not make a right turn. He continued straight and made a slight left turn on Spruce Avenue. This road changes to Salt Flat Road, which eventually becomes a gravel road. At about 12.30 a.m., now on December 14, a volunteer firefighter was driving near 2365 Salt Flat Road, north of Luling, when he noticed a damaged vehicle off to the side of the road. The police were notified. Here's what they found during their investigation. The vehicle spotted by the volunteer firefighter was the 2003 Nissan. This was the vehicle that Jason had been driving. The vehicle had collided with some trees and a fence, but Jason was nowhere to be found. Some damage was sustained, but not enough to believe that Jason would have been seriously injured. The rear of the vehicle had been damaged, and the rear window was broken. About 900 feet south of the vehicle, some of Jason's clothing was found on the road, as if he was walking as he was getting undressed. This included his underwear, socks, sandals, t-shirt, and shorts. Jason's backpack was also on the road. It contained some of his personal belongings, including a prescription bottle, which contained marijuana. The headlights of the vehicle were on. Jason's phone was in the vehicle. The police believe that Jason tried to overcorrect a turn on the gravel road, which caused him to spin off of the road. There was no evidence that any other vehicles were involved in this collision. The police notified Jason's parents and then left the area. Officers didn't immediately launch a large-scale search or collect Jason's clothing from the road. Jason's father drove out to the scene and documented the conditions near where the collision occurred. The police finally initiated a large-scale search effort several hours later. The search effort was mostly carried out by volunteers. A pond near the collision site was completely drained, but nothing was found. The search went on for quite some time without any success. At the time making this video, Jason Landry is still missing. The police believe that after Jason went off the road, he exited his vehicle and wandered out into the surrounding area. 
he died from something like exposure. His body was never found because it was consumed by animals. One type of animal mentioned specifically was the hog. That area of Texas has a massive problem with feral hogs. Some have even suggested that the hogs could have caused the collision, like the creatures are road hogs and running hog wild. The theory may seem like hogwash, but the creatures have actually caused human fatalities and injuries through motor vehicle collisions. Government agencies have put population control programs in place to send the animals to hog heaven. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Jason was described as outgoing, adventurous, strong-willed, courageous, and optimistic. He always figured that things would work out in the end. When Jason was at Texas State University, the COVID pandemic had greatly affected the way classes were delivered. He mostly stayed in his bedroom and took classes online. In the months leading up to his disappearance, Jason's thought processes became increasingly erratic and illogical. His use of illegal drugs intensified. In the weeks before he disappeared, he was experiencing disruptions to his sleep and was not eating well. Item number two, the local police are confident that no one else was involved in Jason's disappearance. Jason simply ran the vehicle off the road by himself. He was using drugs, which may have contributed to the collision. There was no indication that he had contact with anyone. He wasn't there to meet anyone. He wasn't trying to buy drugs. No one was in the vehicle with him. And the Nissan had not been struck by another vehicle. Item number three, by delaying the search, the police missed a crucial opportunity to find Jason when he was probably still reasonably close to his vehicle. It's amazing that they didn't demonstrate any sense of urgency. It was about 30 degrees outside, and they saw Jason's clothing all over the road, yet they said to themselves, oh, he'll turn up somewhere, everything will work out. When the police went through Jason's backpack and found the drugs, there is the sense that they discounted the value of his life in that instant. They believed he was just a drug user, not someone they needed to find. Item number four, the area where Jason went missing, Luling, Texas, is known for drug use and drug dealing. This activity has increased dramatically over the years leading up to Jason's disappearance. A number of volunteers have launched their own investigation into the disappearance. Some of these individuals are former law enforcement officers. One volunteer used to be an FBI agent. Several of these volunteers, including the former FBI agent, have come to believe that Jason was the victim of foul play. Or at least, that's an area that should be seriously explored. The former FBI agent said that based on speaking to several people in the community and receiving a letter in the mail, a theme started to emerge about what could have happened to Jason. Here is the theory that the volunteers came up with. Jason was driving in Luling, Texas, when he came to the intersection of East Austin Street and Magnolia Avenue. This is the intersection where he should have turned right. He was carjacked by one or more drug-dealing inhabitants of the town before making his turn. These attackers killed Jason and drove his car to a remote area, Salt Flat Road. They crashed the vehicle there. They spread his belongings all over the road to make it look like he exited the vehicle and ran off into the night. Even though they were drug dealers, they didn't bother to steal the drugs Jason had in his backpack. They also didn't take his cell phone or any of his property. This is an interesting theory, but why would criminal offenders target a random vehicle at an intersection at 11.30 at night? It's hard to believe that any offenders this reckless would be conscientious enough to avoid leaving any evidence of their crime behind. In my opinion, the reason a few of the residents of Luling lied to the volunteers was to get rivals in trouble. This was their chance to make an anonymous accusation against someone who was dealing drugs in their territory. They didn't know anything about a college student that went missing late at night. Rather, they just saw an opportunity to harass criminal competitors. This brings me to item number five. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Jason was having a rough time in college. The freedom that he experienced there led him to increased drug use. He was given too much autonomy too quickly. Jason's drugs were so important to him that he decided to take them on his trip home for Christmas. 
he was probably using drugs on his journey home. About a half hour into his trip, when he was in Luling, Texas, the effects of the drugs were becoming pronounced. Jason was experiencing a reaction to the drugs that was new to him and severe. He started to become paranoid and frightened. The minimization of his navigation app in favor of a Snapchat story was a symptom of his drug use, not the cause of him becoming lost. I'm not sure he ever became lost. I think he might have been trying to escape imaginary people who he thought were chasing him. He was disoriented and irrational. After driving off the road, Jason had intense fear. He thought he was being tracked. Therefore, he left his phone, dropped his backpack, and took off his clothing. He ran off into a field or into the woods. He found some place to hide, which was secluded, and he died from exposure. His body was never discovered because he was hiding, or it's possible that feral hogs devoured his body after he died. Item number six. The reason so many people believe that Jason was the victim of foul play is because when tragedies like this occur, it's easier to have somebody to blame other than the victim. In addition, blaming Jason brings a conclusion to the story that they cannot tolerate. Blaming someone else, even some mystery drug dealer, gives the story some purpose. The mission to find Jason remains alive. Jason's life retains purpose because now he was the victim of a crime. There's some larger message to Jason's death rather than it just being a story about some college student who used drugs and drove off the road. Now moving to my final thoughts. Some people have said that Jason's drug use was typical. He had just started college, and it is not unusual for college students to experiment with drugs. There's a difference in a behavior being typical and being rational. Just because it's typical doesn't make it rational. Illegal drug use is always dangerous. Some people manage to escape severe consequences, but others do not. Substances have a way of disguising the dangers that they cause. In this case, I think that these substances lived up to that reputation. Those are my thoughts in the case of Jason Landry. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.